In this episode of an in-depth look, I'm going to be doing part one of my adventure of installing Linux on the PlayStation 3. I'll talk about kind of my motivation and some of the things that I'm hoping to achieve by installing Linux on the PlayStation 3. I thought about it for a bit and initially just kind of seemed like a cool thing to do, but then I realized there's three major goals that I want to accomplish by loading Linux on the PlayStation 3. So I'll be covering that in part one of installing Linux on the PlayStation 3 in this episode of an in-depth look. So as I had mentioned at the top of the show, there's a few things that I really want to try to accomplish with the PlayStation 3. Initially I thought about it, and I thought just installing Linux on a PlayStation 3 was cool, and then being able to see the Linux boot kernel messages on my HDTV in my living room would be awesome, and that was almost just enough motivation in its own to get me to do it. But then I started looking into it, and it seemed like there was a lot of complications. For example, depending on the resolution your HDTV or regular standard def TV is running at, you can have problems. If it's a 480p set, a 720p set, or a 1080p set, there might be different commands you have to pass to the bootloader for the install program. And that seemed kind of like a pain. And then, then I had to choose what distribution I wanted. I know Yellow Dog has been releasing a distribution for the PlayStation 3 since it shipped, but I don't know if it's free. I think it might be pay for it. I'm not sure I'm willing to pay for Linux on the PlayStation 3 yet, because I don't know if it's going to be anything more than a toy. I know that Ubuntu and Fedora variants are out there that are specifically tuned for the PlayStation, and I've read that since kernel 2.6 .22, I believe, the, all the drivers for the PlayStation 3 are built into the kernel, so then it's just a matter of finding the distribution that's been compiled for that processor architecture, which is essentially, I believe, a variant of PowerPC, the, the cell processor in the PlayStation 3. I could also do something like Gentoo and build it completely from scratch, but that sounds like a huge time investment. So I've looked through them all, and I'm going to try to go for one of the Fedora or Ubuntu variants. I'm going to start with the Ubuntu variants, and then work my way from there. And the reason I'm going to go with the Ubuntu variants is for the third reason I want Linux on my PlayStation 3, which I'll get to now. So the first thing I thought would be, it'd be a nice to have if the PlayStation 3 could help me encode these videos, right? It's got the cell processor, it's fast, it's powerful, it's supposed to be great at encoding, so wouldn't it be cool if I could send, somehow, if I could send encode jobs to the PlayStation 3, let it chew on it, and I can keep using my workstation for whatever I want to do. Now I thought, geez, that's almost just enough to get me to try Linux on the PlayStation 3. Then I, tried to, then I tried to think of a few other reasons. The second reason I thought of is there is a great DVD player built into the PlayStation 3. Now I don't need it to play back DVDs because I can do that with the native PlayStation operating system. What I would like to be able to do is continue to back up my DVD collection using that drive. I mean how cool would that be, right? A fast DVD drive and also Blu-ray, which would be a bonus, um, that is honestly, 90% I, I, of the PlayStation 3's time is totally unused right now. I mean, I uh, you know, an hour or two a day maybe tops, I use it if I use it that much. So I just have it sitting there. I could have it sitting there backing up my DVDs, encoding them to a format that I could read off on, on my other systems, and that'd be slick. Also, once again, a good utilization of the cell processor and a good utilization of almost like an essentially dedicated DVD backup machine. That'd be pretty slick. I don't know if there's going to be issues with PowerPC versions of DVD backup software and things like that, so I have to look into that. Then the third thing that would be awesome, I mean, just like the tops, if I could get something like Myth TV or some other great me uh, Xbox Media Center, something like that, running on the PlayStation 3. Oh, now think about that for a second. PlayStation 3. You can boot into the PlayStation OS, watch Blu-rays, play video games, do all those kinds of things. That's great. Reboot into Linux, you get a full, awesome Media Center experience, dedicated hardware, fast, and quiet with a nice remote control. I don't know if the remote works on Linux, I'm gonna find out, but that seems like some serious potential. What? How many people, when they're building a media center machine, spend so much time in getting just the right case and getting all the silent parts and trying to get the right video card and the right processor? PlayStation 3 has all of that built in. And if I can get Myth TV or Xbox Media Center, which I really would like to get, um, that is definitely worth the time investment in installing Linux on the PlayStation 3. So I'm going to be looking into those things in the next video, going through the Linux installation process once I've sort of... Ch uh, I'll, I'll also tell you by the next video which Linux distribution I'm going with. I'll, I'll know by then. I'm just all kind of learning this as I go. But I think um, Linux on the PlayStation definitely has a lot of potential and enough reasons to get me to go for it. So I'm going to do it. And I think it's also 
why not, it's also just a matter of why not get a little more out of the hardware that I've already paid for. I've already bought the PlayStation, so why not get more out of my investment? And since Sony has made this an option and they didn't lock it down to the point where you can't do this, I think this is great and as a consumer, I should take advantage of when a company does this. So I'm gonna take a look at installing Linux on the PlayStation 3 in the next episode and I'll give you some answers to the, some of the things I found out, like which distribution does the remote control work under Linux? Because remember, it's a Bluetooth remote. It's not like an IR remote, so that could be a little bit extra complicated but we'll find out. In the meantime, though, uh, if you'd like to follow what I'm doing, see how my progress goes, you can follow me at twitter.com slash chrislas. And really important to us, and I really seriously appreciate it when people do this, we have a promo code you can use at godaddy.com, and it's code L-I-N-U-X, Linux. Come on, that's kind of awesome, right? If you use the promo code Linux when you check out, it saves you some money, and it helps us out. It keeps uh, keeps these shows coming because uh, because of our um, sponsorship with GoDaddy and uh, a few donations from the great folks out there. We're able to buy the equipment and the bandwidth that we need to be able to produce these shows and we really appreciate it when people use those promo codes at GoDaddy.com. So yeah, definitely check back. Uh, I'll be posting these videos at YouTube.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting so you can follow what, how the progress is going with installing Linux on the PlayStation 3. I think um, <clears throat> I think it's got some challenges. I'm, I'm a little actually a little apprehensive so I'm hoping I'll be pleasantly surprised but uh, some of the reading I've done has not been super clear. I'm a little nervous. I don't want to be disappointed. I think that's what I'm most afraid of, is just not being happy with the result. We'll find out in the, uh, I'll, I'll release another episode in a few weeks, or a few days, not a few weeks. Probably, I'll try to shoot for the end of the week um, when I've had some time to sit down there and load it up there. I've got an 80 gig hard drive in my PlayStation 3, so I believe I have plenty of space to install it. I don't think that should be a problem, but, um, I'll report my findings in the uh, future episode of An In-Depth Look. This episode of An In-Depth Look was sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Starting at just $3.99 per month, Linux shared hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24 by 7 support, and free access to GoDaddy Hosting Connection, the place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. Plus, as a viewer of An In-Depth Look, enter the code Linux, that's L-I-N-U-X, when you check out and save an additional 10% on any order. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. Get your PC of the internet at GoDaddy.com.